Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. There's a word in my house that is feared. A word that when I speak it brings shivers down the back of one person in my house in particular. Even by now, when I speak this word, there's a good chance, folks, that tonight I will be on the couch and not in my own bed. The word is sequences. Sequences. That's right. That's the most feared word. For in that word, I have gotten out of more work than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> See, sequences is basically this. There's a project in my house, an activity in my house, and all the, I won't name names, but another person just sees the end conclusion and does not know the sequences to get there. And some sequences are harder than others. I have a very good eye for sequences. That's how it works. And in our text today, all Jesus is doing is talking about sequences to Mary and to Martha, or to Martha and to Mary. The sequences of life, the sequences of faith, the sequences of how we are to walk in this world in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If your sequences are right, it will be smooth, and if it is wrong, it will be difficult. Now, I have to tell you, and every church kind of does this in one way or the other, but every Easter, some churches on Easter morning, they have a breakfast. We do too. And a lot of churches, they ask the youth to put on the breakfast as a fundraiser, which we do too. And yet, you have to watch that as a pastor, because I'm very concerned about it. I would hate to think that our youth, who are every Easter, instead of being in worship, is downstairs uh, preparing a meal. I am so afraid that I actually am worried that some youth might not know that Jesus rose from the dead until they turn 18 and they're no longer in the youth group. Very concerned about this. Because every Easter, where are they? They could be in the kitchen. Now, the youth should be in the kitchen. The youth should be serving Easter breakfast. But the sequence has to be in order, does it not? You don't tell the youth, well, communion's important, but we gotta get those eggs scrambled. And we adults should be the first to tell the youth, we'll wait for the eggs to be scrambled to make sure that you're at the altar. See, that's the sequence that Jesus is talking about with Mary and Martha. Martha had it all confused, didn't she? She thought that the service part came first, and then you could sit and listen to Jesus. Mary, on the other hand, she had her sequences right, and it upset Martha completely. There was a plane, uh, it's flight 401, from New York to Miami. And this plane, when it was coming into Miami, they do all the things you have planes supposed to do the pilot. And one of them is to flip the switch or whatever, and the uh, landing gear comes down. But there's a sensor that says if that landing gear don't go down, there's a little red light that pops on. They know there's a problem, because you can't see the landing gear. And the flight was coming in, and they hit the landing gear, flight 401 from New York to Miami, and sure enough, that little red light came on. But they don't know if that was a malfunction of the red light, or the landing gear hasn't landed, or come fully folded out. And so they started uh, doing these huge loops in Florida, over the Everglades in particular. And the flight engineer, he was the first, he thought that maybe it was just the bulb itself that was a problem. So he's trying to pull that light bulb, that little bulb out, the 75 cent light bulb. He's pulling it and pulling. He can't get it out, but he's positive he got it out and back in, it would go out. Next thing you know, the, the, uh, the flight engineer and the co-pilot, they're both, they're trying to figure out this light bulb. They can get it out. They're positive they can get it out. They're pulling and shoving and, and all this stuff. Finally, the pilot goes, I know what I'm talking about. You guys don't. And three men now are pulling on this light switch. And what they did not realize is the plane was slowly going lower and lower. And they put the plane into the Everglades over a 75 cent light bulb. They forgot the most important part about being a pilot. Fly the plane. 
All right, that is the most important part. We Christians do this. We'll get so focused on a little light bulb, a little, little something, whatever it is, that we forget to worship Christ and him alone first and foremost. Our life in Christ centers on him. Our worship centers on him. Our works that we do for others still centers on Christ. Staying focused on him is what gives you the energy, the joy, and the zeal. I don't think Martha had a lot of joy at that moment, did she? She had lost some of that because she had lost sight of what's important. You know, uh, Jesus, he's a very uh, brave man. I don't think he gets the credit for being as brave as he really is. Jesus stepped in the middle of a fight between two grown sisters. I'd rather go to war. And he did it. I won't do it. If you have a grown sister and you're fighting with her, good luck. But he did. And at the end of that, both Martha and Mary knew that Jesus loved both of them very much and that their relationship was also repaired. Martha learned that to keep the things in order, listen to Christ, then serve. And Mary learned that Jesus will not take away the gospel message, the gift of love, and replace it with work. They both learned that. We love this story of Mary and Martha, and part of it is because we see ourselves in both those women, don't we? We really do. And yet, Jesus didn't say to Martha, you're a horrible person. He just said, put it in the right order. So what did Mary hear that day that left her at the feet of Christ instead of getting up and helping her sister? Mary heard that day that Jesus loved her. Mary heard what you hear every day, that Christ loves you, that Jesus died for you, that your life is fulfilled in him, that there is nothing to worry about on this side of eternity for the next side is paradise with him. What did Mary hear? She hears what we hear Sunday in and Sunday out, that Christ died for your sins and that God loves you. And that you all now, right now, are like Mary sitting at the feet of Christ when we hear his words. And then we'll get up and then we will do the work that God has given us to do. For God and Christ has asked us to do stuff in the proper sequences. May Christ first in all things. And then the work of your life, the work of your vocation, and the work of proclaiming Christ will come naturally and with joy and zeal afterwards. For Jesus loved both those women very much, but he also loves you all just as much. May the certainty that Christ is our Lord has died for your sins, may the certainty that putting Christ first is where you'll find the greatest joy in your life, and may the certainty that serving our Lord will bring you joys that you will never ever can imagine if you just allow it to happen, be in your hearts and in your minds always. Amen.